Hello guys, today we are returning to the client's consultations chart. We've analyzed this one before, but I had another consultation a few days back because uh, many things came true and uh, we want to a little bit expand our horizon for the future. That's the ultimate goal of the astrology. In this video, we'll see how repaying the debts of the aunt can serve as a remedy for the curse. At least knowing the meaning of the houses involved, this action falls into that category. So we will see how this intuitive action, which the person find out herself, is confirmed by the chart that exactly that thing, that action is going in that line of the remedy for that curse. But let's see first the Navamsha if everything is fine there or it needs some tuning. Also, there is no need to demonize the word curse. In Sanskrit, it is Shapa and uh, we have to include it because many ancient classic texts uh, show this as a central chart analysis. So definitely we cannot ignore it and uh, try to paint it with the toxic positivity. But definitely we cannot also demonize this because it just means that one other planet in the chart is afflicted by at least two malefic. And if that situation is also including the Atmakarak of the Eighth Lord, it means that such challenge in life is uh, coming from the past life. A uh, very directly connection is there. This is the Eighth Lord of Nija Dosha because the Ninth House is our past and Twelfth from Ninth, which is the Eighth, is showing the remnants from the past, which are very important karmic baggage, we can say. And the involvement of Atma Karaka in this yoga just shows that we cannot ignore the challenge. We cannot just feel, okay, there will be some deep challenge which normally is serving the personal development because the Atma Karaka is all about that, all about the deep lessons which can help us to get more uh, consciousness and to higher our awareness. And this can be very simple. For example, if Seven House or Venus are involved, then these challenges are in the relationship if the Mercury and the Tenth Lord are involved, then this is more about the career life. The given time was 7.30. We see that the border is at 7.33 and there is this border between the Scorpio and Sagittarius. I have chosen the Sagittarius because at the time of starting very important, most important relationship, we see that the Leo sign was very much activated and there also the Rahu. Rahu is with Mercury, the seventh Lord, and the Leo has seven Lords. So at time of starting the relationship of the marriage, we have to rectify the Navamsha in such a way that it will just show that uh, event very clearly because Navamsha is all about that. So the other important thing is that in the Moon Vimshotri, it was Jupiter, Mercury, normally the Mahadasha planet is related to the Lagna and the Sagittarius is there and the seventh Lord is Mercury. So the sub-period Antardasha is related to that specific event. Seven houses all about marriage. Therefore, the seventh Lord was activated at that time. That is usually what is happening if we have a proper Dasha and properly rectified Navamsha. We can also see that everything else must also click. So the career life, the person was helping with the medical uh, assistance uh, for the people in need. We can see that Moon, Mercury and the Saturn are very directly related to the 10th house. The other work is related to cinematography. Therefore, the 10th Lord, Mercury and Rahu are in the Leo. Leo is very much because it's showing the light. It's very much related there. And of course, Mercury is very much related to the cinema. So we have these two jobs. We have perfectly uh, marriage timing also is saying, yes, this Navamsha rectification is proper. The Sagittarius is the right one. Whenever we are using the Dasha, we need to understand the Mahadasha is showing us, the Antar Dasha is the sub-period, and the Pratyantar Dasha is showing the event. Just like the Navamsha, the seventh house indicates the marriage. And such essential shortcuts from our tradition are very much helping to keep all these parts together and get the proper conclusion. Using the Utpana Dasha, because if Moon is in 11, we should use that Dasha to get the best results. In the Dasha of Venus Jupiter, we see Jupiter is in the 12th house, in Rashi, Lording 12th Lord in the D4. So we can see Utpana is very, always very accurate. And even using the Moon Vimshotri, the going abroad was in the uh, Jupiter Mercury Antar Dasha. So we can see Mercury is also 12th Lord. We can see how the 12th house is always activating the foreign travel or and the marriage and now using the specific dedicated Varga chart we can see what is 
really activated? Is it the marriage or is it the foreign travel or both? Like in this case, uh, the person started the relationship and also moved to north foreign country. Mercury is showing the north at that time. So what I wanted to show is the how the person repaid the debt and how we can now add this metaphysical understanding of what's going on because that is also one of the important features of astrology that it is giving us the meaning and direction to whatever is happening in our life and it can either support our plans or maybe they uh, demand a little bit tuning or sometimes we can in a bad dash or we can go in bad direction so we need to go some 180 degrees uh, turns in our lives. Now the 8th Lord is all about the debts. We know 8th house is all about other people's money. It can be inheritance, debts, all that uh, things. And the 8th Lord is in the 6th house. We know that 6th is a community and also showing the ounce because it's 3rd from the 4th. 4th is the mother, 3rd is uh, the siblings. So the 6th house, when positive, when involving benefits, it is showing the community and this is the good side of the sixth house called Upachaya. Because this Mercury is also uh, surrounded by malefics in the past, the bad side of the sixth house, which is the Dushtana, also came up to the picture and the person had a lot of troubles with the enemies, with the enmity. So this was also already past and now the good side. So you can see if they are good and bad or there are many yogas involving one placement, then the Dasha will show which aspect of that specific combination will come to life or will manifest. Now, there are many things. We have to unravel all of them one by one. First of all, we see it's a curse. It involves eight house, so it's like a curse in the form of debt. And because the Jupiter and the Mercury, there is this Parivartana exchange, because these plans are showing the cash, it's not only debt in the allegoric sense, but it's very literal. It's like a cash. And here, we can see that eight Lord of Debts is in the sixth house of the extended family. And if there is the Parivartana involving bad combination, then always this other part of the stick, especially if benefic, will show the weight out of the problem. And we can now appreciate, now I think you are slowly getting the whole point, the whole dynamic of this story, is that, that Jupiter is in the 12th house and 12th house is all about paying, about giving, about sacrificing, about the renunciation. And the Jupiter and Mercury will show some form of charity or just directly giving some cash, giving some money. So we can see the curses in the sixth house. It involves the some form of debt. This debt is not only literal because the Karaka, Jupiter and Mercury are showing literal part of this debt, we can see that the way out is a 12th house. And because Jupiter and Mercury are there, we can see also that this part of the 12th house, which is activated as a remedy, is also related to giving, right? Because the 12th house also have few meanings. For example, the it could show foreign abroad and the Karaka would be a Venus. And then the remedy would be a little bit different. And also what's interesting from the psychological point of view, someone could advise it's wrong. The person shouldn't repay the debts or help to support this thing because this is ultimately the owned responsibility. Maybe someone would say, oh, this is some kind of codependence or enmeshment or uh, you are the independent. You should not take that burden, especially if you feel it was some kind of burden. But with the karmic perspective, with the astrological perspective, which is transcending the one lifetime horizon, we can give a little bit also deeper meaning to whatever is happening to us and gaining the karmic perspective because the Jyotisha is the map of our karma, we can get a little bit more broad understanding of what's going on and define the things which are extending beyond the one lifetime horizon. That is also the role of astrology, not only to predict what will happen, but also to assign the special function to what we already have in our lives. And therefore, if we already assign those things and to the planets, we can understand what is keeping us closer to satisfaction and also to the mission of life, what is against our happiness or what is against our mission sometimes there could be a quite uh, interesting uh, thing sometimes it's keeping you closer to the mission but can involve a little bit suffering so you need to renounce some other things so there are all these gray areas in Jyotisha and we can uh, define those points of references and then when we assign those things in life to the planets we can understand uh, where to go to get the biggest satisfaction and to get the biggest potential 
from what is given to us. If you are an astrologer and you can't predict some super detailed things, uh, don't worry. Still, if you can assign those uh, things in the client's chart or your friend's chart, your family's chart to their life areas, then still we can use the yoga, the timing and the remedy. So still you can be very helpful by providing all those things because by knowing the timing, you can understand how the machine is changing, when the good things will start, when the bad things will end, uh, which things in life to activate, to provide some form of protection, some shield or some remedy, some solution, how to weaken the planet's uh, influence and also ultimately to provide the metaphysical help which is uh, in essence the mantra by providing the mantra we are also helping uh, clients the people on uh, this uh, deepest level because according to the shastra if you have some kind of curse or some big thing from the past life it can be so deep that uh, we need to address it also from very deep solutions which are the mantras of course we try to be as accurate as possible because this is the uh, jyotisha the vedic tradition is within that category of event-based astrology so we try always to get the biggest detail using the vargas using the specialized the dasha but when it comes to helping and therapeutical side then yogas remedies and the timing these all three can bring the big big value coming from Vedic astrology. Okay guys, that's all for today. Please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. It really helps this channel to make it more visible on this platform. Subscribe because we will be talking about more detailed analysis when it comes to Fargas and curses. Join our Discord community. We already have more than 100 members for one-on-one -on -one consultation. Please hit me up with this email here. And we were talking about the eight house a lot as a giver of a debt, but there are much more indications related to the eight house. So if you want to study this house in more detail, please consider watching this one.